Hello and welcome back and today I want to talk about QNAP, NAS and RAID migration. I know, super exciting stuff, right? Today I want to talk about how to convert the RAID 1 on your QNAP, NAS into a RAID 5. It's one of those things that, you know, less than 5-10% of people that ever buy QNAP, NAS will ever have to contend with. But at the same time, when you do do it, it's quite a tentative measure and you're kind of slightly reluctant to do things because a lot of the time you think, if I get this wrong, all my data, pfft, up in smoke. Now, it's worth highlighting, just like anyone else will tell you, you shouldn't really conduct anything to do with the hard drives or the RAID on your system without a suitable backup. The steps I'm gonna go through today are quite straightforward and quite easy. And for most of you, I'm performing this video just to show you what the result will be before you do it yourself, even though a lot of the steps will seem quite intuitive and easy. But it's worth highlighting that you should always have a migration um, safety net. You should always have a backup of your data elsewhere, be it on a cloud or on another NAS or on a USB drive, because if something does go wrong, because they're even in the most perfect scenario, there can always be errors, then you might lose all of your data. So when conducting the operations today, please, please have a backup in place because you might follow these steps intrinsically from beginning to end. But if you have a power cut during the course of this video, your NAS is going to turn itself off midway through the operation. And even if everything goes smoothly, that's still not an ideal situation. So please, please back up. I've used the first two minutes of this video just to warn you guys, which is pretty depressing. So let's get straight onto the meat and veg. So the first thing we need to do is head over to the storage and snapshots option. It'll be one of the drop downs, nice and easy. Go into it and then from here, go into storage and snapshots. So once we go into this option, it will list the available storage pools. These are where the RAID is being conducted on an EXT4 based file system. If you're using um, something like ZFS, they do remove a number of the layers. Um, but in the case of an EXT file system like this, head into these options and where you see storage pool one, double click. If you've got multiple storage pools, click on the one you want to expand. So as you can see, this RAID group is made up of two disks. This is a RAID 1 environment using two 14TB drives, or 12.73 if you take provisioning into account. Now, before you proceed any further, it's worth highlighting you need to make sure you've got a new drive ready to go inside your system. The majority of QNAP NASs allow something called hot swapping, which is when you can introduce a drive into the system without powering the system down. Um, but if you don't have a hot swap system, you will need to make sure the drive has been installed inside your QNAP NAS before beginning this operation and powering the device on. What I've done is I've already added a drive already. So we've got these two drives and I've got a spare 14 TB drive ready to convert this RAID 1 into a RAID 5. Now, do make sure the drive you're using is the same capacity or larger than the other drives in the RAID array. If it's smaller, the RAID will not complete. It will not let you add the drive to the array because it will severely bottleneck the overall redundancy. If you're using a drive that's larger than the drives in the existing array, such as a 16TB, a 20TB if this is the future or bigger, what will happen is it, the drive will be classed as the same size as the smallest drive in a RAID group. The reason you still might do this, however, is because you can gradually replace all the disks in a RAID array with bigger drives. There's lots of options here that allow you to replace drives one by one with larger disks, but that's something we're gonna do in another video. For, ten, for now, we want to turn this RAID 1 into a RAID 5. So now we're looking at the storage pool, head over to the Manage option, and then go down to Migrate. From here, it will then look into the system for available drives. And there is my other Seagate Ironwolf drive ready to add to my RAID 1 and convert it into a RAID 5. Remember, if you have multiple disks, make sure you're selecting the correct disk by looking at the disk placement. In other words, which bay the drive is in on the physical system and what's being listed here. Click a tick next to the drive you want to convert uh, and do the migration. Click apply. And then it will say to you that the disk will be deleted moving forward. As you can see now, the RAID 5 has now begun. It's now converting this RAID group into a RAID 5 array because this array has now got three disks within it. And we're converting that RAID 1 that we were using earlier into our brand new RAID 5 configuration. Now, the amount of time this will take 
will depend on the power of the NAS system you are using. But even now, in this Intel-based NAS that I'm utilizing, it's going to take quite a long time. You can ignore predominantly the original estimation it will give you. And in most cases, converting a RAID 1 into a RAID 5 will take up to a day, somewhere between 18 hours plus. But in the case of this array, because I'm using such large terabyte drives, this will take especially long, possibly up to a day and a half. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to wrap things up because once this is done, my RAID 1 will have become my RAID 5 and all the data will be intact. And this has been how to convert your RAID 1 into a RAID 5 using your QNAP NAS. I might tack on to the end of this video the completion of this task, but at this time frame you can appreciate that it will take a wee while. But take my word for it that you should need, you should have your QNAP NAS set up in the background to make sure it can be undisturbed for the next day or so. Bear in mind, of course, that you can still access the storage on this RAID volume. It's doing a migration, but you can still access the data within it, although speeds will be severely throttled. So do bear that in mind. And finally, do remember to make sure you've got that backup in place before starting this procedure. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. I hope you found this video helpful. And if you did, click like. If you want to learn more, click subscribe. And I'll see you next time.